Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 eLearning 2 Bootcamp. My name is Michael Walker. I'm Secondary Digital Learning Specialist in Edina, and supporting our work are Jack Salaski, who is our Instructional Technology Specialist, a point person for eLearning Squared. So if you're having issues, he's a person that you can contact to get some support, along with Steve Butner, who is our Director of Media and Technology Services, overseeing our entire program. We're going to begin talking about why we're here having this conversation. Uh, 2020 has been a historic year educationally with the COVID-19 and our response to moving to distance learning in the spring. Normally, this would be the first time you would have a Chromebook device that you would be taking to and from school. And depending on the modality that we are in, whether it's a face, full face-to-face -face or a hybrid model, with partial face-to-face, -face, partial distance learning, or full-on distance learning in the fall. We still don't know what that will be. Having a device to access content is going to be really important. And so here you see examples of students collaborating at school, working independently at home, collaborating and getting support from teachers. All of these modalities are ways that we will be using devices. When we talk about digital age learning in Edina, we're talking about three main components, exploring content, engaging in that content, and expressing learning. When students are exploring content, they're mainly utilizing our Edina learning management system, which is Schoology. Many of you are familiar now with Schoology, having used it a little bit this past spring, but recognize that as we move from fifth grade to sixth grade, Instead of having one Schoology course with all of the content in it, now you will have a separate course for each of your classes that you have. And so what teachers will do is put course content in there. They'll have assignments, calendar information, along with assessments and the official grade book for our secondary schools. Parents will also have access to this and we'll have much more training for both students and parents this August to support you in use of Schoology. When students are engaging in the content, maybe it's creating a graphic organizer or collaborating on a Google Doc to synthesize the notes and information that they're learning about, Google is our main ecosystem for that. Students can create presentations, spreadsheets, documents, drawings, all kinds of components, and even save video in their Google Drive. And then when it comes to expressing learning, digital age tools allow us to have multiple ways for students to express that learning. They can create presentations, videos, or papers for that matter as a way for them to demonstrate their knowledge and learning and to be assessed. Other skills that we focus on are digital citizenship. Our media specialists have curriculum that they've developed and, and working on to promote digital citizenship. We recognize that our move to distance learning really required an understanding that what our digital environment is really an extension of the classroom and the same kind of rules and norms and expectations that we have in the physical space relate to the online space as well. Also, it's important for kids to be able to communicate effectively. And right now that still involves a keyboard. And so having tools like Typing Pal and other things to help support keyboarding and improving that is an important thing. Our main ecosystem through the Edina portal are tools like Schoology, which as I said, is our learning management system. That's our official grade book. So throughout the course of the semesters, you can check Schoology to see the up-to-date grade information, missing assignments, things like that. Our Google suite of products that I mentioned. Mastery Connect for the, at least the first semester will be an assessment tool that may get used. And then Infinite Campus is our student information system where uh, attendance information is housed. The final grade at the end of a term will get put there as well as behavioral information and other information about the student. Learner's Edge is a tool that we use for housing assessment information and profile information about this, the student. And so we'll be expanding on some of that so that teachers can get to know students a little bit better, 
having uh, the profile components of Learner's Edge to support that. Now we'll talk about norms. Norms at school. As you can see on the screen here, your child has received a uh, Lenovo 500e Chromebook, and that can serve both as a regular laptop as well as a tablet. There are Android apps that the district has approved to, to use with that. But along with having that technology, we recognize that there need to be norms in regards to that. And one of the first norms that we need to talk about is that this tool, this Chromebook that you have, can do everything you need to do as a student in Edina, sixth grade through 12th grade, really. It has a built-in camera, so you can actually take pictures and utilize that, even take video. And that means that the cell phone really isn't the tool that we want you using for learning. And in fact, we highly encourage you not to bring your cell phone to school. You don't need it for any classes and you can uh, leave it at home. If you need to make a phone call, there's phones available if you're at school. So cell phones really do not need to be needed in the educational components of United Public Schools. In addition, we have other norms besides the no cell phone policy that you use your device to access content to collaborate and create. We really encourage you to use it for those purposes. Um, you're responsible for your device. This is a district provided device and so you're responsible to keeping it safe and, and in good shape, that you interact appropriately following good digital citizenship, treating your device with care, and when you do come to school, make sure your device is fully charged and that will be something that's important. When the teacher says, please close your device because we're gonna be focusing on something that they want your focus, it's important that you do that. All of these norms are associated with our acceptable use policy, 634. In that policy, we also have an online code of ethics. So things like, what should you name something? We want you to have a positive digital footprint, but we also wanna keep you safe. And as many of you, most of you are under the age of 13, it's important that we follow federal guidelines in regards to that. So if you're submitting an assignment that potentially could be seen, not just by your teacher or your class, but potentially the world, if it gets published outside the district, it's important you always use just your first name and first initial of your last name. Not logging in as another classmate, doing other things like that. And that policy has all of those features. In the presentation below this video, the slides have links to each of these documents so that you can peruse them. Now we also have norms for our teachers. Now, some of these norms are based on thinking about screen time when we're in a face-to-face -face environment at school, but some of the ideas apply in a distance or hybrid model as well. We want our teachers to be thoughtful about their use of technology. And so we ask them to follow ask themselves these three questions in regards to its use. Why are they using it? How often is it being used? What happens when students misuse it? Even in a distance learning situation, it's not necessarily that a screen be used. There may be an activity that doesn't involve a screen. For parents, we invite you to create unplugged spaces at home, have some boundaries around tech time, Recognize that even though this is a district device that you have at your house, it's still your house and your house rules. We hi highly encourage you to have a conversation with your child about what the expectations will be around the use of the device, trying to keep it out of bedrooms, having use of the device in more public spaces. But it's also important for you as a parent to model good digital health. Recognize that your connectivity and how you use your device has an impact on what your child sees. Even things like asking permission from your child before you post a picture of them on social media is something that you might want to get in the habit of. We want you to use, you and your child, to use technology to make a positive impact. This book that's highlighted here, Screenwise by Devorah Heitner, is a great resource for you to look at positive ways and ways to build a good relationship with your child around the use of technology so it's not a push-pull struggle all the time. 
There are some great norms at home that you can find in the American Academy of Pediatrics Family Media Plan. You can put in the ages of your, the children in your family and include yourself and look at some suggestions about having a good digital diet. It's also important for you to stay informed and understand what apps and resources kids are using so that you can be on the lookout for misuse or inappropriate behavior. Setting limits and expectations, as I said. As I said, just because this is a district device, you can still say, how much time is it going to take for your homework? If they say a half hour, hold them to that, set a timer so that they're not distracted moving from tab to tab and doing other things and multitasking instead of focusing on the work and getting it done. If you do see inappropriate use, please stop it. And again, model that positive online behavior. It's also important that you take a moment to have some balance. Have a screen free meals, have screen free days or, or evenings where you do something else as a family or get outside in nature when you can, play a game, things like that. When you're at school or at home, the device is filtered through a tool called GoGuardian. We follow the Children's Internet Protection Act and in our filtering guidelines, and we filter broad categories of information. What that means is that sometimes there might be a new tool or resource that doesn't hasn't been categorized yet, and so that may slip through the cracks. We do keep track of all the history of information that and places that kids go, and we can sometimes see red flags and things and can alert our administrators to contact you if that should ever happen. We also want you to know that you can find see the history of anywhere your child has gone on their Chromebook simply by holding down the controlled key on the device and hitting H. That will bring up the history that's never um, cleared, and it's a way for you to kind of keep track of where the places your child has gone and, and that. If you need any support at all in regards to parenting with your device at home, we have resources on our eLearning Squared site. There's links there. Things like planning for having the device, filtering, how to model, and good products on the market to support you with devices in the home are there. For students, here's some tips that students in the past who have gone through our system have suggested. Uh, using Google's built-in calendars and keep sheets and tasks as a way to help with executive function and keeping track of things, pin frequently used tabs, learn good typing skills and keyboard shortcuts, good ergonomics, and then bring your device charged. When you do come to school face-to-face, -face, make sure that device is fully charged and that you have your charger with you in case you did run out of battery. Our Chromebooks, if they're fully charged, work pretty well, uh, have a pretty good charge throughout the day. That shouldn't be a problem, but you should always have your charger with you just in case. When you complete viewing this video, we ask that you click on the PDF file below that for the review of the Chromebook loan agreement form. Take a look at the responsibilities that you have in case it's damaged, where it may result in a fine. Uh, if you do have an issue with a device, we'll talk about that in a second, but devices may be checked periodically by our district staff to ensure that they are in working order. If there is any damage, if the device is defective, there's going to be no fee to you. Just bring it into the uh, school's media center. We'll give you a replacement device and get it taken care of and, and taken back to you. If there is physical damage, there may be a repair fee assigned. That can be paid through Infinite Campus. There's a pay system in Infinite Campus that can allow you to pay that fee. So the next steps, once you've finished viewing this video, you're going to complete a short quiz just to test and see whether you've been paying attention or not. You'll review the loan agreement, and then there's a form that you can fill out that signifies that you have agreed to the loan agreement as well as the acceptable use policy. In August, we will have additional training and support for students and, st and parents in regards to using Schoology for parents and students, how to uh, access things for students with Google Suite, and then 
resources to support you with Infinite Campus and Learner's Edge and finding information there. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us. Uh, Jack Salaski for any Chromebook issue, you can contact him at the email address up there and the phone number. Or if you have any portal login issues as a parent, please contact, send an email to parent.portal at edinaschools.org and they will be happy to assist you. Thanks very much for taking the time to view this video and have a great day.